I am Terry Budworth, and I'm here at the American Legion in Prescott, Wisconsin with Harley Eaton. He's been a lifelong resident, and he's 94 years old now. He opened his business in 1950. And uh, he's just giving us all his recollections. He uh, grew up in Prescott. This is his hometown. And he opened Eaton Plumbing and Heating in 1950. And we're here today to ask him a few questions to get it recorded for posterity. And I will start by asking Harley, when were you born? February 25th. 1927. Okay. What was your uh, father's and mother's names? Curtis and Dora. And I had and my, my father and my mother, and I had four, well, there were four of us siblings, Dorsey, Marlis, who was deceased already, and Curtis Clare, he went by Clare, he's deceased also. So there's four of us kids. Four kids? Mm -hmm. Now, did you, were you born in Prescott or when did you move here? I moved here in 1932. Okay. Uh, now, I've got a note that says the Prescott grade school burned in December of 1935. That's correct. I watched it burn. You watched it burn. I was in third grade. Third grade? And we lived just one, one house away from the school. We lived, just, we lived in Locust Street, then right down by the by school. All right. Was third grade in that school at the time? That's first grade. First grade, yeah, okay. That, yeah, this, this was a, that's, this, the school on this end is, was, was, was the high school. All right. And then the grade school was well, they're right next to each other, you know. Oh, all right. Almost in the same building. Yeah, they're in a separate building, but they were right next to each other. Okay. That was, a, that was, a, that was an old building, a big old two-story building, you know, big, huge building. That's what I, and I, now I was the third or fourth grade in the third grade because I went to, I went to school in the Methodist church basement. Oh, after it burned? Mm-hmm. That's what. So they used church basements for, for school. Oh, different church basements mm -hmm. for different grades. Yep. Okay. And uh, yeah, that that church, the Methodist church in was where the Masonic Hall is now. All right. Yeah, that was the Methodist church. Okay. Let's see. Uh, your father managed a creamery here. No, he 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 managed it for a couple of years. I think he came here in 1930 or 31. I don't. Let's say 31, probably. 30. But we moved here. He, he, he stayed here a while. We didn't move right away. I think we moved here in '32. So then he, they, he I think, in 1935, somewhere in there, he, uh, he bought a, it was called the Farmer's Creamery then. Okay. And he bought the creamery, so he owned the creamery. Uh, did you work down there? Yeah, when I was high school kid, yeah. When you were a kid? Yeah, in, in high school part of the time. Right. Mainly wash milk cans because in those days. You didn't, you didn't get whole milk. Everything was cream. The cream? Farm, farmer separated the stuff at, 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 at your farm. All right. And then you only cream, so. And then it changed to milk during the before the war, I think. And then went to whole milk and separated at the creamery. All right. I, used, I used to wash the discs, discs in the separator. Where was the creamery? It's uh, where Betty House is. There's no. Oh, right down on the, on the river. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm just going to pick 1940. How many people were in Prescott back 1940? then? 1940. Well, you gone, gone up some, I think, back into the 30 census. About, I'd say 1940, probably, I don't think it was 1,000, probably 800, maybe. Okay. 1930 I, was less than that. Well, because I, I was I, Lower part of grade school, about 700 probably. Oh. Somewhere is like that. Okay. Well, that's one good. Time, one time it was bigger than that. One time it was the biggest town in the county. Yeah. And then the railroads came through, and that was a. Uh, uh, Mississippi River was the main highway in the United States, so. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. And no roads. Can you uh, remember any of the businesses that were downtown? Oh, sure. 
I am always inquisitive. <clears throat> uh, I, I uh, like to go to certain business, watch what they're doing. Oh, John, John Saxene had a, his wife is the artist, and I heard, I heard you had a picture. Oh, yeah. I, I knew her. Did mother, you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, John? Yeah, she wore the big high, lace boots, you know. Like, All right. During the century, that was a style for women, you know, back. For women? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I was interested to hear you say you, you had one of them Saxene's pictures. No. Okay. I'll be there. That's interesting. I've got one. Yeah, you got one. That's great. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah I remember her. Yeah. Did your uh, Did your parents have a car? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They did back in the twenties and thirties. Oh yeah, in the thirties. Thirties. Yeah, I can't remember twenties too much because it was. Yeah, we almost had. Yeah, you always had a car. All right. Um, Old mobiles and stuff. So, what did you do for fun? During your school years, you know, fishing or boating or well, being, being a river town, the mist. The river was our, our, our big recreational grounds, you know, and because that furnished us swimming and stuff in the summer and fishing and uh, ice skating in the winter. We never ice, we never had ice skating rinks. Then we used to go down and clear off place down and when Babe oh, Babe used to do be the ice man in town, yeah. and then when they when they harvested ice in the winter time, they plow off a big pieces of the lake down there by the Bain Beach. Okay. That would make perfect ice for skating on, you know. So Knobloch would plow the snow yeah. off for Yeah, to you. get to make, make more ice, you know. Make, okay, make ice sure, there. sure. Now, you had mentioned one time that, I don't remember yourself, but some of the bigger guys could walk across the Mississippi. Yeah, that, yeah I got, yeah, that was back in, before, I'm going, going back before the dams were, were built. Before the dams. Before they filled the pools. Yeah. And uh, in the dry years, the river were down, you know. In the summer, in the, in the wing dams actually used to get about two or three feet out of the water. Oh, really? Way out of okay. the water, yeah. yeah. <coughs> and then the river, so I, I think it was Chuck Eckert and, and Sand Crane Chickling, they, they were older boys, they were older. They were tall, and they, they, they waded across them one time down by the creamery by my dad's place there. Yeah. We waded across the Mississippi one day. <laughs> Way up there. I was quite a bit smaller, you know. You didn't do it? No, I was Oh, okay. I was four feet too short, probably. So who uh, who were some of your best friends growing up in school? Oh, I can't remember. Most of them were all, they're all dead, the ones that had in back in grade school, I mean. Yeah, sure, uh, but but back when I was younger, uh, more like Mark Levias and I had the, the paper and Marvin Seaball. We had the, we were the paper boy car carriers in this town. Mars and I had the St. Paul Dispatch and Pioneer Press, and uh, Baldy had the uh, Minneapolis paper. Okay. And so we got to be we were paper boyfriends. But then I, my picture, Marshall's picture, my picture in the history of Prescott. The what? Remember the history of Prescott? That oh, the book. You know, yes. Marshall Price and I are in there. Oh, are you? In, in, okay. in Simpson's Drug Store. Right? Right. Bags, paper bags. All yeah. right. Yeah. Old time paper boy. <laughs> yeah, there. The town was pretty small then, too. Yeah. Um, and here's uh, so when you were growing up in Prescott, what are what are some of your best memories and maybe some of your worst memories? Oh boy, I got so many memories. I, I can't tell you which one is better than the other. You know. Uh, well, I don't know. Just being able to go out and play and play all day and not yeah. worry about anything. Yeah. Well, I, I, I spent. I started working pretty, when I was pretty young. I was tall for my age, you know. So I was. When I was real young. I well, we used to play, play simple games. There was no television or nothing. And I, I, I never had a radio either, even, you know. No radio? No television? But a lot of people didn't have a radio. Yeah. Quite a few did, though. But, uh, but we used to have simple games like kick the can. And I don't know. We used to have all kinds of, all kinds of games. And, of course, it's a lot of, and, uh, of course, you don't do it anymore. But remember back, back in the old days, that's, that's these are old, when the kids got older, the boys, yeah, Halloween tipping over outhouses was a big thing. <laughs> well, plumbing in town, everybody had an outhouse, so tipping off people's outhouse, that oh, was a big, big thing. Everybody had an outhouse. Practically, yeah. <laughs> I remember one of my friends one time, Jerry, was going to go get, give it an extra shot, one of them fell in the hole. Oh, one of your friends fell in the hole? Oh, jeez. 
And then I remember one time, Bud House and Chuck Jakes, they were older, a couple of years. And Dean, Ollie Troyer lived right down, I can't remember, oh, uh, oh, down here on, uh, not too far from here, the little house. And they, they, those guys not only kept those outhouses, threw his wood pile in the hole. <laughs> Found out who it was, so DJ Brown of Superintendent Schools, he had to march them over after school, and there they're down the hole throwing wood out. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> that was that was who? Uh, Chuck Jakes and Bud House. Chuck Jakes and Bud House. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there's a thing you can remember, you know. Yeah. Uh, along came World War II. Tell us about what you did and did you finish school and that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, World War II changed, changed everything. Because uh, you could, uh, it, they hired boys to do men's work because they're big enough to, you know, you lie about your age, you get the job. Yeah. So I worked in the, so I worked in the packing plants and, and uh, I worked, uh, I, I didn't realize I was so old. I thought, when I, I worked for the Federal Barge Lines on, a, on the steam room office on a steamboat. In those days, everything was steamboats there weren't yeah, any diesel tow boats. You know. Oh, you worked on the steamboats on the river? Yeah, on okay. the St. Paul Harbor up there. And uh, uh, I, 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 a few years ago, I ran across the old Coast Guard Pass. The war was on, so I had a pass to be on these boats, you know. Oh. And anyway, I'm, I found out I'm uh, three years older than I am. Well, you told him that? Yeah, and I looked at the damn thing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Born in 1925 or some damn thing, I don't know. Yeah. But you, as long as you do the work. Well, when did you go in the service and what branch were you in? I went in the service. I, I didn't finish high school here. I didn't finish. I Because uh, I was 18, I was senior year. I was the oldest one in our class, I think. Okay. And uh, so I, I wanted to join the Navy. And, but I joined the Navy, you know. And, my senior year, so I didn't, I didn't graduate from here. So you didn't graduate from Prescott High School, mm -hmm. you went in the Navy. Yeah, but I still went to college anyway because when, after, after the war, I got, uh, as long as you pass the entrance exam, you, you go to college, you know, okay. as long as you pass the entrance exam, I was able to pass that, I guess, I don't know. Where'd you go to college? Um, Hamlin University for a couple of years. And Hamlin? And University of Minnesota a couple of years. So okay. I could, I could, I Roundabout education. Okay. And um, I got the, 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 so, so uh, I see that World War II made a lot of changes. We all grew up. We grew up past, you know. Yeah. Did you? Where did you serve your time in the Navy? Most of the time, I was in training. I was a, I was a special program called the Eddy program. Okay. A specialized program on. Uh, uh, Electronics was just coming in, and radar and stuff, and you tell everything, and uh, all this radar equipment and stuff, and that was, uh, that was pretty top secret stuff in those days, you know. Okay. And so they, I, I wrote some tests in the Navy, and the ID program was a classified program, you know. And uh, so I spent most, a lot of my time just in uh, getting trained for the, the big time. We have to, Put stuff together. You know. Okay. I made it. And I got out. Now you've been you've been on the honor guard in Prescott for veterans affairs and veterans funerals. A few more lots of funerals. <laughs> Did you miss any? Not too many. No. I'm I, 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 I'm sure. I, I, I've been involved in at least a couple. I'm two three hundred funerals. I know that. Yeah. Well, seventy years. Did it for seventy years. Oh yeah. And I was head of it, head of it, head of it for about 30, 30, 30 years. All right. Um, so you started your own business in nineteen fifty. Fifty. Yep. And you recently had your ninety fourth birthday. Mm hmm. And you spent your birthday working yeah. in your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Jeepers, creepers. Oh, so, yeah. I got to keep moving or else I'm, <laughs> when I, if I want to stop, I'm, that's it. You think that's it, huh? I know it is. Yeah, quit. So. Keep moving. 
Uh, when and who did you marry? Uh, married Charlotte Fiedler. Charlotte Fiedler, okay. Uh, our local, well, uh, folks had a farm out here. And when did, when was that? Got married in uh, 1951. 51? Yeah. Okay. And I think we've been married just all 70, 70 years, yeah. 70 years. How many children do you have? Four. Four children? Okay. Two boys, two girls. All right. And when did you move uh, from Prescott out to the country where you live I, now? I, see, I, try, I, I think I bought this little, it was called this little farm, 60 acres. I, I bought that in about 19, I, I, I think 68, somewhere in there. Okay. I never just moved out then. I remember the bank tried talking me out of buy some of the country. You're crazy to move out there. Nobody, no, everybody lives in town. Yeah. And, and, and anyway, so they were loaning you the money, but they uh, say you're, you're doing wrong. You're doing the wrong thing. <laughs> and now it's all houses out right there. Yeah, yeah, well, and, and uh, I've got a house out yeah, you're near out there, where you too, live. Yeah, you're same township. Yeah. So that's. Uh, some of the major changes in Prescott, a lot of people are moving out of town, well, living out in the country. Oh, they work. I mean, people move from Prescott out of the country, but a lot of people, new people moving in the country, buying land in the country, you know. Okay. Well, quite, well, quite, quite a few people that might actually live in town, are born and raised in town, that when they went to work, they want to live around here, so they bought a land, bought an acre or two in the country, and so a lot, of these, a lot of these country people out here are. We were born and raised in town here. Yeah. Well, I think 700 I, people are about 5,000 now. Don't know a soul anymore in town. I just know everybody. Yeah, that's pretty and, typical of and, and half, small and, towns. And half Hastings, because Hastings was a small, a small town. Preston was a tiny town compared to Hastings. Oh, really? But, but, but I, knew, I knew a lot of people in Hastings. Yeah. They're all, they're all gone too. All of them are gone. Well, yeah, yeah, another thing about Prescott too is uh, what has changed a lot too in, in the over the years. Prescott a lot, of, a lot of its identity. When I grew up, Prescott was a, was a, a river town. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of the people during the depression worked on the river. And, okay. And at one time, I think well, when I was growing up, a lot of us kids in high school still worked on the river. You know, yeah. in the summertime, and. Uh, it, uh, I, I think at one time Prescott, because of cap weather, cap, the, the sea wing had sunk down in by Maiden Rock way back oh, early, but early 19, uh, 19, oh, Anyway, they owned that, that sea wing. But anyway, cap, cap weather, when they start transportation going on the river again, he, he being an old steam, steamboat man, uh, Got, got on with the government federal barge line, so he hired a lot of Prescott guys. Those Prescott guys mostly became pilots and captains. Mm -hmm. So one time, I remember when I was a kid, most of the steamboats coming up from St. Louis either had a pilot from Prescott on or a captain. Oh, really? And okay. one time, right up in St. Paul paper, Prescott had more captains and pilots on the Mississippi River than any town, including St. I mean, from the upper, on the upper river. Yep. In the upper river than St. Louis even. And, oh, for uh, heaven's sake. Yeah. yeah. That ran the line boats you know, between St. Paul and St. Louis. Can you remember when I came to town, uh, you talked about the kids all worked on the river when you mm -hmm. were here. When I came to town, they were working at Jake's Seed Company. Yeah. Can you remember? I, wor I worked there, too. Did you? When I was a kid. Yeah. Do you remember no, when uh, Mr. Jake's got it started, old old he, William? No, he, he, he started it uh, before I was born, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, he started well about that time, probably. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I worked in test plots in the summertime. And that was a good job. I, I, Lee Tassel was just a two or three week job, but I got a job on the test plots, and I worked all summer. All right. A pretty good job. You know, said, in those days, in those days, you didn't have to have much money. You had money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had a quarter, you had a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> That's something. Yeah. Yeah, so we, I worked there, and, and uh, I 
for anything. And, and when I was a young, real young kid, I used to know, I worked in the stores downtown, sweeping floors on Saturdays and stuff. For Jordan McGonigle and some of the, he had the dry goods store. There were a lot of stores in town in those days. There was. As a kid, yeah. There was. There was a grocery store and a hardware we, we, store? We had about three grocery stores, two butcher shops. I couldn't believe we had that many things down there. <laughs> John Saxene's down there, and that became a photo studio, and then I worked in that when I was in high school, early part of high school. They built pictures in a dark room. Oh, did Everybody you? Everybody had box cameras. I had a box camera. I took a lot of pictures of a box camera. I don't happen to all of it. I had a lot of historical pictures I took, you know. No. I was, I, was, I was always involved in something like that. Okay, good. And, good. And, uh, but we had electrical, we had, we had a, but it, a lot more stuff we got now, actually. A lot more what? Different kind of business we had now. We had doctors and we had druggists, drugstore. And oh, right. We don't have that now. Yeah. You know, think about it. We had, well, you didn't get, not everybody had cars and people went to, a lot of people went shopping up to the cities on the train. Take it the morning train and come back in the evening train. Oh, okay. St. Paul, we shopping. Go to St. Paul and shop and mm -hmm. take the train up and take the train, train back. back. Yeah. Okay. So, the, yeah. but it it always stopped in Prescott. Oh, the yeah. train. That was, that, was, that, was, that was a that was a train. Um, they used to have a train, a commuter train, even called the Alpine Goose. They had about one car on it. They okay. ran morning and night. It, it, it <laughs> ran a lot of stuff. Oh, for heaven's sake, yeah. And then uh, I got Ray Sherman telling about me, telling me about his mother. Uh, old Otto Hermerson's father had a, a little, um, a little uh, boat. Um, well, not little, but he used to take passengers to Hastings. Okay. It was a, it was a kind of big launch, and he can remember his mother took him over there when before school started to buy some Clothes went over there with Otto with, uh, oh, Hermerson's okay. lunch. Okay. And Otto, uh, that old lunch had, there was John Saxe involved in that too, but he had, the, the, to put it in reverse, the reverse the, the pitches on the propeller. Stopped the engine, restarted the engine, and the propeller turned the other way. But then sometimes he wouldn't get the engine started all the way, started drifting down the river. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was a Voyager name that boy. I can remember that was the old frame was still in the levee there quite a while. So let's see. Uh, uh, was now like Lake Street or downtown? That was mostly businesses. Mm -hmm. In downtown, yeah. 60, 55, 60 years ago. Yeah. Seventy years yeah, ago. There wasn't, there wasn't any business up on the hill or anything like that, you know. Wasn't any. No. no. Okay. I think the, uh, it, it had, and then the feed mill was down in the levee, and the lumberyard was down in the levee, and, or that. And that, the creamery? Uh, and, and, uh, creamery and a feed mill and, and a lumber mill. And, and part of the Presque Exchange, Presque Exchange was a pretty big building, and they had a harness maker and everything, you know. Harness maker? Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's still, still a lot of horses being used yet, you know. Yeah. Especially in the wintertime. You know, because of the roads and stuff, so. Oh, I suppose. Many of the slaves and all the feeding mill had a feed ground. And all right. You would be the hitching post downtown there, just tore them out when they redid Main Street. But those hitching posts are there for up to about 10 years, 20 years ago, they took them out. They finally took them out, but they're in the hitching posts yet. Well, they still had them? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yep. Told to ask you about Popeye Trone here. Oh, yeah, Popeye, yeah. He was a little younger than me, but. He got to be, uh, we got to be pretty good friends. Uh, when when, uh, when when you got into high school, of course, I went to service, and then the papa was always, was always with us older guys most of the time. He, he's full of the devil when he's young, even now. <laughs> Boy, yeah, he was something else too. <laughs> you read a book on I can I can always read a whole book on him. Oh, is that right? Oh yeah, interesting stories. For adults only? Well, no, I was no. <laughs> no, he was. Uh, I remember he was written that one St. St. Paul paper. I could have read up on him one time because he got in a gun, gun uh, shooter. One, one of the other river piles. So he worked in the harbor quite a while up here, and another pile on the on a different tow, tow boat, and he got into it, and uh, 
So he could always wait to arrest that guy, you know. Well, anyway, he, I think he, he come alongside him one time, and he went aboard his boat and was going to beat the shit out of him. <laughs> he was up, up sleeping, he was off watching, he was going to beat him up. And that got to me a big loss of, I don't know, St. Paul paper. And the reporter of that really made it look funny. Oh, it's fun to talk about Popeye, you know. <laughs> he could. A pirate. Let's see, what else? Big event in the summertime when, when, when the big steam excursion boats came to town. The what boats? Excursion, excur excursions. Oh, excursions. Excursions, Okay, yeah. yeah. The Spectrus lines and the capital, steamer capital, that was quite a big deal. Yeah. They would stop here? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then they take maybe an afternoon trip and an evening trip. Evening trip to the adults more. And the daytime trip, most of the mothers took their kids. They went, went to Red Wing and back and get off in Red Wing for a couple hours. And so the boats were fairly frequent? No, and some, maybe one, one excursion a year, maybe. Oh, okay. So they fly the whole river, they covered the whole river, St. Louis to a, you know, right. you know, was, uh, was lines they started in New Orleans, so they had, they had three, three big boats, big, big ones, so big steam boats. All right. So I have to ask, you're 94 years old, mm -hmm. and you're reading off your tablet, you don't need glasses yet? No. Well, I, 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 I do for distance, for driving. For driving, I've had a lot of I've had a lot of surgery on my eyes though too. Oh yeah. They've been inside my balls are tools, you know. <laughs> and a hole in written on. Luck, luck, luck. Yeah. Well, that's just. I, just, I, I was going blind. But no. I don't know why I think of it, but it's amazing. <laughs> oh, I know something I wanted to ask. We are at the American Legion Hall in Prescott, and you helped. And oh, dig the basement we, we for dug, this building. Yeah, we dug that after we, we dug this basement by hand, no machines. Yeah, yeah, we did. That. Yeah, that was the World War II guys are still around yet. You know what? Who uh, who uh, was on that crew? Do you remember? Oh, I, well, let's see, it was the, back the World War II guys with Lloyd Keller and, and uh, Albert Martin and uh, Slim Severson, Slim Bowles. Uh, there's quite a few active, there's young, younger guys yet, they're in their 40s since World War II, and I was, yeah. you know, they were, because World War I and World War II were only about 20 years apart, they were this far apart. What did you do, did you fill a wheelbarrow and, yeah, and then, then wheel some, it out? And then somebody brought, brought over, one of the guys out in the farm, him and you, rather, somebody brought in um, uh, uh, one of their, uh, conveyors, you know, from the, from the oh, sure. Farm, you know, put a conveyor out there, you know, okay, you know, shovel it over, dump it in the conveyor, and they go outside and dump it in the Bob Sumter dump truck. Okay, and then Bob bought a backhoe, about the, about the tail end of the job, <laughs> and he could come down and kind of scrape, scrape in a little bit. So, okay, and we made it. You made it. One end here is all solid rock, and we had to pick one of that out. Yeah, but you know, we were young and ambitious. Well, it had we to be done. We worked hard to save, to save, to save. We didn't have any money then. Because see, World War II guys are, they're, they're about petered out. They were exhausted. There's no, no way to raise any money. Well, he was, he was just carp, carp, fish fry and stuff. This is a beautiful building in this day. Two stories high. God, it was a pretty building. Too bad it had to, it had to be torn down. They tore it down just maintenance-wise. The roof was leaking. Was it originally an American Legion Hall? No, uh, it, was, it was a girls, it was a girls, some private girls uh, club yeah. of some kind out in the cities, and uh, they owned the land from here all the way down to St. Croix River. Oh, they did? Mm -hmm. Bill Jackson, uh, and Bill Jackson built his house, and he, I he, bought, he, he maybe bought the land from some of that estate, I don't know. But they, they owned the land here all the way down to the St. Croix. And, and that was, what did you say from was, the city? It was a girls, girls, not a YMCA or something, but it was something, something like that, some kind of a girls organization. Okay. And this great big, great big stairway came down here, big balusters on each side, which is like gone to the wind, you know. I was never, oh, gone yeah. The wind, one of those things. Big, big, big balustrades around each side, curved and stairway up. Beautiful. 
Empire but places. That eventually had to be torn down? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's when well, you dug did the basement? Because they didn't, run, they didn't have any money and the roof was leaking and they said, well, somebody said, we'll tear the top off, we'll keep the lumber and then, well, then you won't have to spend any money. And that was a dumb thing to do, but it, well, <laughs> it, uh, they, they didn't quite fix it up like they said they were going to. Oh, but, okay. But this was a, yeah, you had fireplaces, it was a beautiful building. Didn't have basement in it. All right. And so we put the basement in. A lot of history in this thing too here, the building. <clears throat> yeah. See, what well, I was going to mention, one time, years ago, I gave a historical, it was, it was history too, as, at the, out at the cemetery, Memorial Day, I gave a talk about the history of our, our Memorial Day parades and all that stuff. Oh, you did? I still got it, yeah. All right. I was going to do it again someday, but... Some day is still coming. Yeah, but I, 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 I had a lot of stuff about the... I think it was, some people thought it was pretty good and interesting, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was another big event in this town, Memorial Day. Yes, I bet it was. Mm -hmm. That's before the days of television and all that stuff. People had cars and... Well, those days didn't have long weekends or nothing either. Memorial Day was on 31st, on the last day of May. Yeah. It was Tuesday or Wednesday. And so and people didn't go any place, but they, they all... People showed up for those things. Yeah. Nobody else to go. Fort July celebrations were big. You know, now it's just another how long is the weekend, you know, right? Growing up was good, because I tell you, I talked to my friend Art Peterson, he, his father was a minister here back in the 30s, and we're still friends, you know, we're, we're kept together all these years, he, Art's 95, I think he's turned 95 now, lives in California, and I was talking to him a month or two ago, and he said, now I look back on it, he says, Preston, it was a great place to raise a family, great place, great place to grow up in. Oh yeah, I bet. Yeah.